Well, hello, my fellow Americans and fellow Christians, and thank you for joining me for one more day over the word of the Lord here in the United States of America. Peace be unto you, and peace be unto the world. I have tried to air with consistency reasonings for the end times and the possibility these are not the end times. I have since 2009 accurately named quite a few events before they happened in the world. I, this I attribute to a stroke of luck and perhaps just fortunate intuitive discernment because of the review of history. If history teaches us anything, it shows us it is simply full of surprises and that it has the ability to shock the intellect, invoke immediate changes, reel men into heroism or defeat with events never thought of. It also helps us to foresee the long-range possibilities of the future if we have the courage to accept its challenges and its demands. The study of history does make one wiser and helps us to foresee things long range. The question is, can we rely on predictions of the future from a historical point of view? This is worthy of thought and should be part of our considerations. Take, for example, this small item of information I read from a book in 1934. It states, This new religion, we are told, must be absolutely different from anything else that ever existed. We are told it must be social, it must be political, it must be worldly. Historically, this was written in 1934, and is parallel to the current war we are witnessing in the United States today concerning the statute of the separation of church and state. These very words written in 34 are historically, in general, the same exact dogma of the Republican Christian coalitions who exist today. With importance, we need to add to this coalition dogma, what we are experiencing today, the predictions of Karl Marx. Karl Marx's thesis was that modernization, industrialization, and with social and economic development would invariably carry out feudalism through capitalism and result in a change to a communist state. He contended that communism would be born out of capitalistic developed countries and that communism would be a consequence of capitalistic feuds. His whole prediction was based on the disintegration of a free society through capitalism and that it would ultimately result in socialism. Interesting enough, we are experiencing capitalistic feuds here in America and in the world. The call has been recently for a socialistic one world currency and the Occupy protests throughout America and the world are based on capitalistic feuds. Now viewing all this historically is interesting. In 1934 the depression of 29 had made some progress but only to a recession. Yet the visionaries at that time were calling for a social, political, and worldly religion to help solve the nation's dilemma. The historic analogy is perplexing here. We here in America had the greatest depression in 2008, and we have today the Republican Party calling for a social, political, worldly government based on religion. Even to a greater degree, the Republican Party with its Christian base, has the determinist view of Karl Marx. Their philosophy is that socialistic involvement in human affairs is the only solution to the current dilemma of immoral and debased activities in the private and business sectors of America. The claim is fixed causes produce fixed effects. Thus, a socialistic democratic ideal predicating on the notion that all creativity and intellectual wisdom to produce a strong and free society has come and gone in America. The idea pushed is the Constitution overruled through amendments, forcing social and moral laws upon the citizens and businesses in the United States with tyrannical democratic rule, thus despising the freedom of men 
through the free and unchallenged powers of those in rule or office. The Republican Christian Coalition is only interested in rule socially, with no changes in political power. They are interested in dominant power and control, which historically is in alignment with the ideals of Karl Marx and Adolf Hitler. Now in 1936, Hitler started his march through Europe. This was six and a half years after the crash of 29, which by the way, the crash of 29 affected the world economically. Then, just as the crash of 2008 affects the world economically today. We are only three years in transition from the crash of 2008, but the scenario of Hitler sweeping through Europe, invoking new rule, is historically similar to the power changes through the protested uprisings in the Middle East, who are also invoking new rule. Hitler historically had one nemesis that was in the way of his dominant power, and that was that little island of England. Curious enough, Israel is considered the nemesis of error power in the Middle East. They see that small country as an obstruction to complete Muslim power in the region. They are calling for Israel's destruction in similarity to Hitler's calling for England's destruction. Does history repeat itself? It surely looks like it and the similarities are in place today. What I am leading up to is that what followed Hitler's march through Europe was World War. So are we on the verge of another world war starting in the Middle East just by simply reviewing history? Now Hitler, according to Bible scholars, was the last Nero before a final Nero is to appear in the end times. Or for those unfamiliar with Bible prophecy, this is reference to the Antichrist who is to be the final dominant leader of the world before the return of Christ. Antichrist is going to be and have a social, economic, political government ruled by religion of worshiping him and him alone. In short, it is to be a communistic state of the world with one dominant power and nobody will be able to buy or sell without consent of the state, which we now can understand through the persistent effort of men today who are trying to force a social, tyrannical, democratic rule through religion. So is it possible that out of a world war in the Middle East, there will emerge a new power in the world, reconstructing politics, economics, and social standing with the overtone of religious rule, that rule which will eliminate all religions in the world, leaving only one religion, the religion of Antichrist, which he brings into existence by his power and political dominance. In addition, Antichrist is going to be considered by the world a great military strategist. It states in Bible prophecy that the term, who is able to make war with him, will be the common terminology used to describe him when he is in power by all people in the world. From this standpoint, we can see that there must be some type a military exchange in the world in order for Antichrist to have this label. So again, we see military buildup and power in the Middle East today makes all the above possible. Whether or not it will happen is another story. However, this is just may be the way Antichrist is introduced into the world. It will be through military exchange, being a leader who exists today but perhaps is hidden from our view until his time. It is possible history is preparing us for the future, and we cannot this time afford to discount or dismiss possible scenarios. For man today possesses weapons that can ultimately destroy most of the planet, and these very weapons can reach any shore on any continent, any time. Let history record our actions, and may our, my very words today ring true. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America.